All right, you guys, this is going to be um, our weekly webinar here. Today is December the 14th. I need to be better about kind of labeling the day when I do these. That way, I know, uh, like kind of moving forward when that starts. But here we go. We're going to kick this thing off. Um, I'm going to leave the chat box up here for a second just because I'm going to ask a question here in a sec. You'll know why in a bit. But without further ado, let's get into it. So a quick little background. Um, I've been doing these a lot. I guess I can move this out of the way. Um, I was the the skinny kid, 150 pounds before, and I've been the big kid at 230 pounds before. Um, and I've seen all kind of walks of life. The real crazy part is in both of these photos, the one on the left and on the right, I was working out for two hours plus a day in the gym, um, kind of willy nilly, not really understanding the best way to move my body and the best way to get the results and the physique that I wanted, as well as the performance that I wanted being an athlete. Um, and never really felt like I truly had a good understanding of who and, uh, what I kind of wanted to achieve. So, Oh boy, here I go. Technical difficulties here. Stand by one second. All right. Yeah. So what I didn't know, uh, achieving the body that you want doesn't really take two hours or more of working out a day. Understanding your body, listening to it and working to improve it is way more effective. I still train hard, only about 45 or so minutes a day. Um, and that's not even every day. Sometimes I'll do a half hour or so as well. So it's not about how hard you train or how long you train. It's more about educating yourself and uh, making sure that you're doing what's right for your body. And that kind of takes a little bit of introspection and hard work. But it got me to where I am now, which is, uh, you know, standing next to an NFL player. I'll say that I'll uh, I'll take that any day there <laughs> with that guy being as shredded up as he is. But uh, this isn't about me. It's about you guys. So real quick before we start, and I'm just going to leave this chat box over here. Um, this coaching call is going to be a little bit different than normal. Um, before we start, I just want to see if I have at least the people at our lives permission to give you a little bit of tough love today. And just if you can, thumbs up in the message chat for me real fast like an emoji with a thumb if you can before i get started here and i'll just wait a second for for the consent if you will thumbs up thank you tyler appreciate that all right alex sweet okay so uh we're gonna get this thing rolling here um the topic for today is on uh glutamine bcaa's or branch chain amino acids creatine and whey protein and i say that all with the caveat of well that was supposed to be a chat about those things um but in reality uh as i'm doing research on these and i decided that we'd go a different avenue with this chat and we're going to talk about the truth of what uh supplement companies are not telling you and exactly why i think uh they're actually a waste of money unless you're doing these three things already and it's consistently you're working out in the gym you're eating whole nutrient dense foods most of the time and more importantly you're doing all the simple things well consistently um so i just want to talk a little bit about what consistency looks like on a day-to-day -day basis so this is uh something that a lot of you have not seen before but this is our uh, Blue Chip Athletic Club weekly check-in form accountability. So whenever I see a weekly check-in form, I will mark green or red based on if somebody has completed their form and done the workouts and programming that they're supposed to do. Um, as you can see, there's a shitload of red on this screen. Uh, what I'll say is the people that are kind of in this green zone over here, a couple of people that are doing their weekly check-in forms with some consistency, they're starting to see a lot of results in their program. And the people that are doing the red uh, are seeing less results because I think they're less consistent and they're not hitting the goals that they're looking to hit in this, in this program or any program for that matter. Um, so realistically, the truth, is that 95% of the people will read this, what I'm saying today. They'll listen to what I'm saying today and not change a single thing about their lives. But for the 5% of people that are listening, I'm going to speak directly to you for a second. Um, make a change, whether it's small, um, whether it's even a little bit larger, that moves the needle in the direction that you want to go. Um, and realistically, the best advice I can give is how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time. It's one small move at a time. It's one small step at a time. 
And the other question I want you to ask is like, is there anything in life that you've done to this point that has been a magic pill to get where you want to be if it's worth anything? So like that graduate degree, your certification in X, Y, or Z program, graduating college or high school, like none of those things happened overnight. It all took a, a insurmountable amount of work that if you're standing at the bottom of the mountain and you're looking at the top from the base, it's really, really scary. But if you just take one step at a time to get to where you want to be, it's something that you can continually move the needle, build that momentum and continue on. So obviously I ask these questions knowing that the truth of the matter is that's a rhetorical question. Obviously you don't get where you want to go uh, rapidly. If that were the case, you know, we would have a world full of millionaires with six pack abs I've got a fitness uh, professional that I follow a lot of his information. And he says that all the time. It's like, at the end of the day, it's hard to be fit. It's hard to be a millionaire. It's hard to be an entrepreneur. It's hard to be a business person. It's hard to do these things and juggle the demands of life as a parent, as a partner, as a spouse, whatever that kind of looks like for you. Um, and at the end of the day, everybody's going to be able to make an excuse and draw on an excuse and lean into that. And the reality is, is that's your excuse if you want to let it be your excuse. And it could also easily not be your excuse if you think about it the other way and kind of reframe your mindset. So all I want to say is that the truth in general, it isn't sexy, right? Like if I were to say, oh, you can take the, the if I'm the, in the matrix and I'm like, you can take the red pill or the blue pill. Um, that's something that's way more sexy for people to say, oh yeah, I'm just going to punt the the hard work or punt the consistency or do all this stuff and then get to where I want to be. The reality is, is that, you know, going to the gym every day when you don't want to is harder. The reality is that, um, you know, businesses, especially supplementation businesses in general, the reason that they're a multi-billion dollar industry is because they're profiting off of people thinking that there's going to be a magic pill, a magic supplement, a magic this or that that will get them over the line and get them to where they want to be. Um, but as I'm sure you all know, that's not the case. And we're going to kind of get into the, why that is not the case. So let's talk about the tale of two gym goers. Um, so person A is somebody who's uh, had a gym membership. They've been going for five years on and off, but they don't go very frequently. There's no real structure or plan. They work out kind of willy nilly. Um, they only go under ideal conditions. What do I mean by that? Oh, when their outfit's perfect, when the perfect music is playing, when they got the best night of sleep, excuse me, when, you know, their friend is going with them, when, you know, X, Y, Z, you could fill in the blank, right? So, you know, the type of person I'm talking about, and this person is spending hundreds of dollars on the top supplements, glutamine, BCAAs, creatine and whey protein, which this, uh, presentation was supposed to be about today. Um, and, you know, in the future, I definitely would love to chat about these things too. And even at the end, I may be able to put some into it after hopefully lighting a fire under, under some of our asses here. But, you know, this person is doing all these things, but they're not consistent with their overall health and wellness. They're not eating the whole nutrient dense foods that most of the times, and, you know, keep that person in mind, that's going to be person A. So person B here is going to be somebody who's got a full gym membership for five years. They've been constantly going four days a week. They rarely miss that target. Uh, they learn how to best push their body with a little bit of introspection. They've got mental resiliency when they don't want to work out, which like I said before, is most likely is going to be 80% of the time. I'll say even for myself this morning, believe it or not, I woke up and the only reason that I went to the gym this morning is because I signed up for the class that I was going to go to at the beginning of the week. Um, today, I did not want to go. I was tired. Uh, I Last night I had an awful like workout and I didn't sleep the best. And I was like, you know what? I just don't. Uh... And then I checked the schedule to see if I actually signed up for the class. Lo and behold, I did. And I'm not somebody to break a contract with myself and not do what I say I'm going to do. So I went to the class anyway. And the whole rest of my day's trajectory is completely changed because I held the line and I was doing what I said I was going to do. Um, all that to say, this person's going to go to the gym most or all the time that they say they're going to, and they don't take any supplements, but they eat whole minimally processed foods 60% of the time. My question for you is, you know, person A or person B, who is going to have better results? Well, here's the real brass tacks. These are actual compliance numbers from people that are in Blue Chip Athletic Club here. So person A, this is a seven day number here at the 0%. 
a 30 day for an 18% and a 90 day saying 12%. So this is the amount of workouts that they've completed in the program. Um, this is person a right here. They haven't lost any weight. There's no change in their body type. Uh, and they're not really seeing any progress and likely getting pretty frustrated with themselves where person B is over here who has done hundred percent of the workouts that include rest days, might I add, uh, in the last seven days. So this person here could have log logged into the app and gotten, you know, 33% based on the rest days that are kind of programmed in there anyway. Um, their 30 day compliance rate is 96%. And 90 day is 97%. So there's more attention. There's more intention. There's more introspection. There's more discussion with the coach. There's more feedback going both ways. Um, and this person's lost 12 pounds in 10 weeks. Uh, doesn't take any supplements, maybe drinks coffee. Uh, and this person has not seen any change. And uh, I think that we are at the end of the day, moral of the story, I think we're in this position right here and talking about uh, glutamine, BCAAs, whey's, um, creatine in general uh, by putting the cart before the horse, right? Um, think about those supplements. Uh, I will say, be honest, I take BCAAs, I take creatine, I drink whey or uh, excuse me, protein powder. Um, and there, I believe there is glutamine as well in the BCAAs that I take. But I only started taking those after I had a foundation of whole nutrient dense foods, minimally processed most of the time and going to the gym consistently. Oh, and by the way, I'm trying to dunk a basketball on this goal that I'm you know, trying to hit of athletic performance as well. So for the majority of people, supplementation in regards to these can help your performance, but there's nothing that can help the fact that you're not going to the gym and you're not doing the work. And honestly, the best quote, in my opinion, for this is uh, Susan Hyatt. She says, don't be mad about the results you didn't earn from the work you didn't do. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't think it's much more difficult than that. Um, and at the end of the day as well, I'd just like to say, like, before we start trying to dial in supplements, uh, doing all these other things, I think it's more important that we dial in consistency in the gym, doing the easy things right, uh, getting the bed at a decent hour when you're going to wake up and work out in the morning, whatever that kind of looks like for you. And the rest will take care of itself and we'll get ourselves there. Um, so are there any questions from the people that are live in the call for now? And then after that, I can uh, chat actually too, as well about a little bit about the actual supplements. If you uh, have questions about any of those specifically. Feel free to unmute yourself and start chatting if you have got questions. Everything is good right now. You have anything, anybody? Tyler, Alex, I think it's just you guys for now. I'm good right now. Thanks. Yeah, no questions, please. Okay. Um, yeah, so I can do a quick little overview of the topic that we we're supposed to have real fast, just as an end cap, um, BCAAs, glutamine, uh, creatine all kind of fall in that same realm of muscle recovery and performance in regards to a workout. I think they do have their place again, like I said before, but I think again, the more important base is having that base of you know, understanding of like, hey, these are the habits and lifestyle choices that we need to be making to make sure that these are being implemented and being effectively used. Because um, if you're not breaking down muscle tissue, if you're not doing these other things, like these supplements don't really have a place. As far as whey protein is concerned, um, using protein to supplement exactly what the name in indicates is super important for people that are not getting enough protein in their normal diet. Um, typical prescription for protein intake is going to be between how oh, the different people will have a different opinion. Typically will be between 0.7 and one or 0.7 and 1.1 gram per pound of body weight that you are. Um, if you're trying to have a lean muscle mass and put on lean muscle mass or burn fat and re recompose your body, 
Um, I just prescribe typically for people to be around the one gram per pound of body weight that they have. So if I'm a 200 pound person, I'd have about 200 grams of protein in a day. And if my food is not getting me to that point, that's where I add in the, the supplementation of the protein shake as well. Um, creatine is one of the most researched supplements on the planet. Uh, super safe creatine monohydrates, really, really great for you. Um, I, you know, definitely use it myself, but again, I think that the base foundation is going to be much more important. So, um, just wanted to make sure that I'm tying those things in and making sure that that's made uh, super apparent for everybody too. So, um, if you guys don't have anything else for me, I will, uh, chat with you guys soon. Let me know if you have any other follow-up questions and hopefully we can, uh, continue to crush this holiday season. I know it's, uh, kind of starting to kick in here being in the middle of December. Oh, good. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you guys. We'll see ya. Thanks, Blake.